What's up, what's up, what's up? I'm Alexandra Harbushka, founder of Life with Herpes. Happy Thursday. I feel like it's a Friday. Does anyone else feel like it's a Friday? Maybe because it's a long holiday weekend. You know, like I'm like already there. I'm already in the holiday. I don't know. What do you guys think? So let's get right to it. I'm in the middle of my oh shit anniversary. This is the 11 year anniversary of me being diagnosed with genital HSV2 herpes. So we're actually living through it. If you've been watching my feed, I've been posting um, actual vlogs. So five, eight minute vlogs of me really, really walking through what it was like being diagnosed with herpes 11 years ago. So 11 years ago, even let's see Thursday, I still hadn't received my diagnosis. That's not until tomorrow, but it was last Sunday I started feeling that I was, um, hi Olivia, okay, I'll answer that in a second. Um, it was last Sunday that I first felt my first like, uh-oh, you know, like something's not right, what is that, what am I feeling down there? Um, you know, I was looking in the mirror, trying to see down there, what does it look like, what does it feel, what am I feeling? Um, and I was in so much pain. I remember just like crying myself to sleep because I was in a ton of pain as well as like, oh shit, there's some blisters down there. It was Tuesday of this week, 11 years ago, that I went to my doctor telling her, I think I have something down there. Like, what is going on? Can you please swab this? Can you please look at this? Like, what is going on down there? And she looked at it and she's like, it doesn't look like herpes. I, I just think it's a really bad yeast infection. Thanks for the hearts, guys. And uh, lo and behold, so she swabbed it and we did all that. Um, yes, that was last Tuesday. By now Thursday, I was still waiting a herpes diagnosis. I was in a ton of pain, excruciating pain. Um, just like something is not right. So I will fill you in on the rest of the story tomorrow when I actually get herpes. Or you can go through all the vlogs I've been posting um, in the feed. I've been doing some really funny ones. I've been doing some like heartfelt, serious ones. So I hope you're enjoying it. Um, Olivia, you asked, what does a herpes outbreak look like? So that's a really, really, really great question. And that's one of the reasons why so many people do not officially get diagnosed with herpes. So a lot of times when we think we see something down there or we all have this preconceived notion of what a herpes outbreak should look at, usually from Google, um, we think it's like this entire outbreak that should be covering every single piece of our skin on our genitals. And that's actually not very accurate. Actually 90% of the people with HSV2 will never know they have herpes. They'll never be diagnosed with herpes. And that's one of the reasons why herpes keeps getting transmitted, keeps getting passed. It's a silent spread because people are not diagnosed. And when we go and get ask our doctor to be tested for it, like, hey, I think I have this, or I wanna be a responsible sexually active adult, will you please test me for herpes or STDs? They don't include herpes on the panel. So that's something that's really, really frustrating, um, especially back to you, Olivia, like what's, what does an outbreak actually look like? So it can look like a couple of things. It can look like a cluster of blisters. It can look like one blister or it can be a paper cut. So when I say blisters, that can be um, fluid filled blisters. It's usually like, there's not like pus. It could look like it have like a white, kind of like a white head, but it, there's not like pus. Like if you have a zit or something, like it's like pus, right? Herpes outbreak doesn't really have pus. It's more of a fluid filled blister and um, it's extremely painful. So a lot of times it can be overlooked. Like if you have a paper cut, you can easily say um, it is, it is, it is like I nicked myself shaving or is my underwear or something. What in the world did I just stumble upon? Well, we're talking about herpes. We're talking about specifically genital herpes. 80% uh, of the population actually has herpes. And so I'm just doing my best to educate people on it. So that's what you're doing here. <laughs> so yeah, back to the blisters. Um, it can be, it can look like anything. Now, something that's also very frustrating is we can have herpes and never get blisters. I actually don't know if that is frustrating because that's awesome if you don't get blisters you're not dealing with the annoying pain of an outbreak but unfortunately you can still transmit herpes so you are still able to transmit it if you don't have outbreaks that's called asymptomatic 
and we are contagious when the virus sheds. So when the virus sheds, it actually pops up to the surface of the skin where we have herpes and then um, that skin to skin contact can transmit it to a partner. Um, should you be concerned if you have a cold sore, it's your first one, you're not sure what to do. I wouldn't be concerned, it's something that you know, two out of three people have. Um, it's something I would just, I would be aware of it. I wouldn't touch it, I wouldn't touch it. I wouldn't touch it or itch it or like play with it. I'd let it heal, like specifically do not touch it and touch your eye or do not touch it and touch your genitals. You can unintentionally transmit it. Oh, I'm freezing, I'm so sorry. Um, I don't know how to fix that, I have full Wi-Fi. Um, so if you don't have the antibodies, you can unintentionally transmit it to another part of your body. Once you have the antibodies, you um, cannot reinfect yourself. Why don't they include it on the STI panel or STD panel? So frustrating. The re the, what I take from the reason why it's not included on the STD panel or STI panel is because it's not that big of a deal. Um, herpes is looked at as an STD or and it's also looked at something that you just commonly get from living life. Um, so in the medical profession, the way I understand it is like they look at it as like it's not that big of a deal. They also look at it as the aftermath of telling someone they have herpes is far worse than actually somebody knowing they have herpes. Um, telling someone they have herpes can be far more detrimental mentally, um, far more detrimental on someone's relationship and so on if they don't if they don't even have outbreaks, like most people don't get outbreaks. You get them all the time. Oh, I'm so sorry. If you get if you get herpes outbreaks a lot, I'd invite you to ask yourself a couple of questions. Like, what's your lifestyle like? What's your diet like? Are you getting plenty of water? Are you getting plenty of sleep? Are you stressed out? There's things like arginine and lysine that play a huge role in herpes outbreaks. So um, if you're adding lots of arginine to your diet, which can be hidden in workouts, protein powders, it's a lot of nuts, peanuts, chocolate, um, coconut, that has a lot of, of arginine in it, um, that can unintentionally be causing outbreaks for you. On the flip side, lysine can be really beneficial if we have a high lysine diet, which is protein, dairy, fish, shellfish, uh, vegetables, you can also take lysine supplements. These are the supplements I personally take. I take them daily. It's from Palmera Health, from formerly known as Natural Cure Labs. And um, I take these daily to help supplement my lysine. I do eat high lysine foods, but at the same time, this just also helps me know that I can fight the virus. What it does is it helps prevent the replication. It helps, it blocks the herpes virus from feeding off of the arginine that we consume. Um, yeah, herpes outbreaks can be painful and itchy. It's a nerve pain, um, and it's not a dull pain. It's a very, like, the nerve pain. It's a, that type of pain. Um, it can be very itchy, like, oh, I just want to itch it. Uh, is herpes fatal? It is not fatal. It is a virus that lives in our nervous system, and that pops up when our nervous system is uh, scattered or freaking out or... Um, or we don't have, or not calm when we're under a lot of stress or our immune system is working double time. My friend wants children, but she's afraid to transfer herpes to her husband. So that's a definite concern of transmitting it to a partner. And um, it's something we all deal with. I would say if you're thinking about having children, I would say herpes is probably the least of your worries. There's far bigger fish to fry in a relationship and in parenting um, than dealing with herpes. I like to say that a herpes conversation should be your easiest, hardest conversation that you have with a partner. So I completely understand not wanting to pass it to her partner. Um, a couple of things that she can do, and I'm not a doctor, I can't recommend, I can't prescribe, but I would say um, look at taking the antiviral if that's something that's um, that she really does not want to pass it to her partner or her husband. The antiviral does a really good job of keeping the virus dormant. It's FDA proven and there's a lot there. You can also take the lysine that I just showed right here. This lysine right here um, can also help with preventing outbreaks and keeping herpes outbreaks at bay. So that could also help her husband. Um, yeah, I, I just, 
millions of millions of mommies have herpes and um, I wouldn't want to see her missing out on the opportunity to have a baby if because of a herpes virus so um, how do we know Uh, how do we know when we shed? Okay, that's something that's super frustrating. There's shed, there's symptomatic and asymptomatic shedding. Symptomatic is usually when we have like tingles or itch or like you feel the virus, you can like feel it wanting to get an outbreak. That would be a sign that either you might be getting an outbreak or the virus is, something's going on with the virus. Then asymptomatic is when you literally have no signs, symptoms, feeling, tingles, itch, like no blister, you have no idea that you're shedding. So that's really the, un fortunate thing because you have no idea can people pass it on to their babies if they have it and do not know it uh, yes um, but let me clarify that you cannot transmit it in utero so while you're pregnant you cannot transmit it um, the baby's protected uh, inside and not gonna it doesn't go through our bodily fluids the ways that it would be that your ways that your child would pick up herpes would be skin to skin contact just like any of us so it would be kissing your child if you have oral herpes or it could be during a vaginal delivery if you have vaginal herpes um, so with that being said i had a vaginal delivery i did not have an outbreak at the time and i took the antiviral um, my doctor told me that with not having an outbreak and taking the antiviral i had a less than one percent chance of transmitting it to my son so i took that risk um yeah what's the earliest a person can get an outbreak after being exposed about two days is typically the earliest um i'm, 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 I'm. I'm gonna skip the whole uh roe v wade just i want to stay on herpes <laughs> but I, I i know that that's like a really hard thing right now so um you're in the middle of an outbreak right now fml i understand <laughs> Um, I would try to get plenty of rest, drink plenty of water, watch your arginine intake, um, and if you have lysine, take lysine. Definitely take lysine. That's going to be really, really helpful in speeding up your recovery. That's also what we want to do. Also, um, if you have any of our Secret Society wellness products, this is probably, well, there's a lot. The, there's a lot. These are the products that we developed specifically for herpes. Um, I was going to start off with saying take the recovery soak. This really kicks ass when you have an outbreak. The Epsom salts help relax your nervous system. They also add magnesium into your body, which is great for your nerves. The, the salts help wound heal. It helps with itch. It helps with tingle. And you just like leave your bath feeling amazing. Um, there's, three, there's three soaks in this one thing, so I totally recommend this. This is also this is personally my favorite. I love the Everyday Wellness Body Oil. I put it on. You can put it in your bath, or you can put it directly on your outbreak. So I love to use this. There's tea tree oil. There's um, lemon balm. There's other citrus oils in here that are all great for antiviral um, and skin repair. So this is really helping for recovery. And then lastly, this is your favorite. Personally, I don't use this one as often. You guys use this all the time. This is the Rescue Ball, and this was designed to roll directly on. Love the way it smells, to like roll directly onto your outbreak. There's eucalyptus and peppermint. Peppermint is really, really strong in helping fight the herpes virus. Um, but this works wonders. Like, I, you guys love this one. Like, I sell out of this all the time, and I'm always having to restock. Does taking valcyclovir once a day prevent transmission? Yeah, it does. It's FDA proven to lower transmission by 48%. So it's a, called like a prophylactic. It helps it helps lower the transmission risk. Uh, what about valcyclovir? Yeah, it's what I was just talking about. It's the FDA drug. It's the generic drug of Valtrex that you can take daily. It's typically about 500 milligrams a day you can take. Um, or if you have an outbreak, it's usually recommended by your doctor, 1,000 milligrams, so 500 a.m. and 500 p.m. Should I be taking the lysine pills? I obviously can't recommend it. Um, I'm not a doctor, but I personally take them. Um, I've seen a lot of support, a lot of help with me taking it. Again, these are the ones that I take. These are the ones that I love, and I definitely take them every day. I can feel pro prodrome or like the tingles 
kick in if I skip a day. So I'm very like, yeah, I definitely do not miss it. It's all linked in my bio, you guys. So you can link to look at the life scene. You can link to look at the Secret Society wellness products. You're beautiful. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Are you saying not to tell people if you don't get blisters? No, I am not saying that. I am saying you still need to disclose that you have herpes um, and that you can unintentionally, unawaringly, is that a word? Unawaringly, un, unaware. You can be unaware and still transfer it to a person. So absolutely, you need to disclose that you have herpes, absolutely. Um, you are actually stunning. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, can I date you? I'm married, so I appreciate that but I am happily, happily married. <laughs> Unfortunately, the back pain is so uncomfortable. Oh, hey, Autumn. Yeah, the, I know you've been dealing with that. Are you taking your Epsom salt baths? I know we talked about that. Um, that, sh that might be helpful. Also, chiropractor, that might be helpful. Were you a model? I wish, I wish I was a model. I always wanted to be a model. I'm 5'4", so no, I was never a model. I keep freezing. I'm. Ugh, I don't know why. I don't know how to fix that. Some doctors don't always prescribe medication. Yeah, you're right. Some doctors don't always prescribe it. It also depends on what country you're in. It depends on your health insurance. It depends on your doctor's relationship with the pharmaceutical company. Um, will it spread in a hot tub? No, it won't spread in a hot tub. <sighs> um, Guys, what system do you look out for to know when another outbreak is coming? I'm gonna answer this last one and then I've got to bounce. Um, what symptoms do you look for when you know another outbreak is coming? I personally look for my lymph nodes, are they swollen? Number one, am I fatigued? Am I like, oh my gosh, I'm so tired. I don't wanna get out of bed. So am I super fatigued? Did I not sleep well the night before? Um, and then I look at, for me, it's like a lightning bolt of like, eek. Like I feel like a lightning bolt to the area that I get outbreaks and that's typically how I know something's happening. So what do I do? I immediately apply this, the Everyday Wellness Oil, which is designed to help, it's an antiviral, it's designed to help herpes outbreaks and it is helpful with the pain. And then I up my lacing. So that's what I do, which you've all seen. I've, 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 I'm mumbling now. I take my lysine. All right, guys, I'm gonna go. I'm sorry about the freezing. I hope you have an all. I hope you have a great rest of your Thursday. I will see you tomorrow, and I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Keep asking your questions, and I'll support. Bye.